Latino class. Part of week two's work will be to locate three sources from our library using both the library website and Google Scholar. And so what is all this about? And so you should have finished by the middle of week two, towards the end of week two, the book opening up by writing it down. And so for journal entry six, you'll need to do is jot down the topics that interest you. So things from the book that you would like to explore further. And so this could be looking at topics like trauma and racism, trauma and religious oppression, looking at other forms of expression like art or yoga or dance, which have all been used with different types of patients to help with trauma and healing or stress. And so you're going to take your topic and then you're going to go onto our library website. Now the book opening up by writing it down was published in 2015. So the objective of this research project is to find more recent research on the topic of expressive writing and healing and trauma for instance. So we're looking for articles published after 2015, so 215 or later. Now, in the book, he doesn't elaborate too much on other expressions like art, yoga, or dance. He alludes to it very, very briefly. So if you find information that is published 2010 or later, that should be fine. Okay, so our key is to expand our knowledge about writing, expressive writing and healing, and join this conversation, right? So you wanna imagine Pinna Baker in a room and he's just given a talk about his book and you would like to offer something as well, right? So something that you have learned to complement what he's just shared, okay? So that's our goal here with this project. So I'm gonna to come to the library home page and I'm gonna type in the terms dance and healing because I teach Argentine tango and I dance it as well and I'm interested in the relationship between dance and healing. One of the goals of my search is to find peer-reviewed articles. Also, I want to find articles published after 2010 to the recent date. So I'm putting here 2010 over here on the right and I hit refine. And then I see here I have 11,000 results. That's still way too many to look through. And so the next step that I want to do is click on journal title. And down here I see these are the different journals that are publishing this particular topic. And I see here American Journal of Dance Therapy. And so this includes articles by experts and practitioners using dance intentionally as a form of therapy. So more than likely, this is what I'm going to focus my research in. I can start looking through these 11,000 results if I like, but I'm going to start here. I have 167 articles to look through, so this is a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to start here and see what I can find. Now the next step is to use Google Scholar. I would like for you guys to find at least one article from Google Scholar. So I'm going to click on this link here, search in Google Scholar. Automatically it puts the terms in for you, dance and healing, okay? And it's going to look through all of these sources, 395,000. That's way too many sources to have to search through. And I could narrow it again since 2010 to the current date, but that's still way too many sources. If I go and put 2010, for instance, that narrows it down to 61,000. Still way too much to sift through. Rather, what I'm going to do instead is type in the author's name, Pennebaker, his first name was James, and writing. And so now we have a far more manageable search results list, only 16,800 instead of the 60,000 or more. And so we have here various books and articles that he's published. Expressive writing, expressive writing, opening up. So this is our class textbook. And what we want to do is actually right click on any of the sources. James Pennebaker is the authority on expressive writing and healing. So if anybody is publishing in this area, they're all citing him. And so this is what this means, right? 287 people cited him. And we have some of his publications actually 
where thousands of people in something that he published actually was back in 1995. And so I'm just going to expand the search just so we can get his most famous work, writing about emotional experiences as a therapeutic process. And so this has been cited by 3,340 people. Now, it's too old. It was published in 1997. However, I can do is right-click, open it up as a new tab, right? So now I'm just going to search through 3,000 citations. I click on this box here, and I type in dancing and healing. And then I can search through 188 results. I go back to my search list. And I see here sharing one story. Okay, so I'm going to right click on that one because he co authored that one. Again, he is the main person that everybody cites. I click on the little box and I'm looking through this source to see if there's articles on um, dancing and healing. And then there's 10 results dancing with depression. He, these builders healing trauma, right? And so I can look through these sources. Again, I go back to the original, and I have here expressive writing emotional upheavals, expressive writing connections to physical and mental health. So again, I right click on that, open it up as a new tab, and I click the little box. If you forget to click the box, it's just gonna do a general search all over again. So there's eight, storytelling, poetry, writing, and the art of metaphor, and, and so, and so from here, I can then click on this link, for instance, and I can retrieve the source. If you don't see view it at IC library, that means you're not able to access the source. So you either see a link for the PDF or a link for HTML, or you'll see a link for view it at IC library. So it says here full text is available here. So I click on that. On this particular site, I believe I click here, and now I have the actual article. And so you will need to actually save these articles as a PDF. So I can download it here and then save it onto my laptop or computer. Now keep in mind with these particular sources that you will need to download and do not bookmark because the library will break these links. So if you break the links and you have only bookmark your sources, when you go back later to retrieve them, they're gone and you have to start your search all over and hopefully you remembered what your search is. The cool thing also about these databases is that you can click on the site link and then you can use MLA or APA, whichever, and then you're just going to copy this, and this is what you're going to put into your presentation later, okay? So you definitely want to also retrieve that citation. And then you can skim through the source, so just look over the abstract and skim through it and look at the conclusion as well. If this seems to be answering your questions and it's relevant to, to your topic, then go ahead and download it and save it as one of your sources. If a source is available to you in PDF, you can go ahead and click on that link. And then again, make sure that you download the actual article. And don't forget to actually add the author's name and the title so you can easily retrieve this on your hard drive. Once you have located your sources, then you will come onto this particular website you're going to find an actual Google Slides template. This is where you'll do your presentation and you have hundreds to look through. Select one that fits your theme or topic. Once you make a copy of that presentation, you're going to share it with me by using my email address. On the very first slide, you're just going to add a title slide with your actual questions and your name. On slide two, you're going to add that citation. So it's going to have the author's name, the year of publication, the article title, the name of the journal. So you add that citation at the very top. And then in the main text box, you're going to summarize the main talking points of the article. And then you'll talk about how it basically connects to the book, how it expands upon what you've already learned from the book, Penn and Baker and Smith's book. And then you do the same for slide three, so that's your second source, and then slide four will be your last source. And then when looking at your sources, when looking through Google Scholar and the library, 
You need to ask yourself, how is this answering your question? Are other questions raised for you? So remember when you're just surfing these different sources, that to just skim until you know for sure that you actually found something of interest. Uh, so don't forget, you need to look at the date. If you are going to focus on expressive writing, it does need to be published after 2015. I will be reviewing your actual sources. So if a source is outdated or if a source is irrelevant, then I will let you know so that way you can replace that source and I can help you via Zoom to help you find another source.